hello so if you missed our last video it was the birth story we walked you through the labor and the delivery of our baby boy um, and then this video is all about everything after his birth yeah we've been trying to film this video all week and today <laughs> is the first day that we've actually I've gotten home early from over at the house and we said all right we're doing this today and it works out with the baby all right so we're at the hospital and you know gave birth to the baby ben comes back from the nicu um where they had brought our little boy to get him all checked up on um while he was gone uh they had actually come in and wanted to draw my blood again um and i asked for what reason and they said it's for to test for tuberculosis and it's just something they do for everyone and i was able to deny that um didn't feel like it was necessary they did the other ones that they had to do and i denied that one um and interesting enough they came back when i was we were checked in over at our like maternity room they also came back later that day to draw my blood for the same thing and i had to say no again so mm -hmm. just know that you, you can deny that yeah so then we end up making it back to the room they well they brought us over to our room we were in the delivery room and then they bring you over to your room where you actually stay overnight and this is separate from where the baby is yeah so, so the baby was in the NICU which wasn't too far like two hallways down the way and keep in mind like anytime you want to go see the baby it's like one parent at a time with everything going on yeah so we couldn't go see him together we did when they took us to our room they allowed us to go go see him um, together but after that when we were visiting him it was one parent at a time and uh, we couldn't have we could have one other designated visitor um, but it could only be that one person and we couldn't change it yeah so at this point they had told us we were staying at the hospital for at least a day Right. Yes, yes. We were, and we were like, okay, how soon can we get out of here? And then we realized, well, wait a second, if he's in the NICU, we kind of want to stay in here a little bit longer. Um, and they were really understanding about that and had even suggested it to us um, and allowing us to stay there for two nights. Um, and we, were, we ended up being there like pretty much like two and a half days, really. Yep. Um, and then they allow one parent to stay in the NICU. Um, so I then stayed with our little baby boy in the NICU then that Thursday night. Um, and unfortunately, Ben had to go home. So, yeah, so we were, <laughs> as we were in the hospital and staying in this room, there's a lot of things then that yeah. transpired, a lot of stuff going on, right? Right, yeah, so. You know, there, there wasn't really a lot of time for me to rest because then I wanted to get on with like nursing him, right? So I first, they set me up with a pump and I pumped and they um, fed that to him, like finger fed that to him. And their stomachs are so tiny to begin with, like he only needed a little bit to start with. Um, and when your mil milk first comes in, it's actually colostrum before it's milk. And so, um, it's a, like a darker yellow color opposed to like a white milky color and um, you know got that going and then it was like from the get-go they're like okay so we're gonna have to supplement him because he's preemie he's gonna need to eat more and since it's so early on since he came early you're probably not gonna be able to produce enough colostrum or milk and it was like, you know, hours into him being born, and they're already saying this, assuming that I'm not going to be able to produce enough milk or colostrum. So we're like, okay, give us some time because we don't want to have to supplement with formula. And then their other option was um, donor milk. Formula, there's no like vegan formula that we, that isn't aligned with how we eat. Um, the one that they did offer has soy, 
we don't do soy because pretty much all soy is genetically modified and soy is really high in fat. Um, so we didn't want to do that and then we didn't want to do the donor breast milk because I mean we really just wanted him to have my Your milk. milk. <laughs> <laughs> it's mama's milk right? Like if we're gonna have to supplement and you know so they wanted if that's the case they wanted him you know I would nurse and then they also wanted me to pump and feed him in a bottle so they could actually see how much milk he was getting. Um, that was their worry that he wasn't gonna like latch on properly and get enough milk and all this stuff. So anyways, after that we were like, okay, like, you know, give us some time. And they're like, okay, well by the next day, show us that you can produce enough and then we're cool and it can be all your milk. So like, I was like a pumping machine. I would <sighs> go nurse him every three hours and then right after I would pump. And then I'd bring the milk into the NICU and they'd put it in their little fridge with the label on it. And every time I would produce a little bit more, a little bit more. Um, and meanwhile, Ben and his mom went out and like got all this stuff to help um, up my milk production. Um, I was doing a ton of fruit, I was doing potatoes, avocado, coconut water, raspberry leaf tea. And then they even got some supplements just to like be safe. So they got like fenugreek capsules and then um, a lactation support capsule by uh, Gaia. Um, well, like, I went home and I cut all my fenugreek oh, yeah. microgreens because <laughs> we sell fenugreek, and I was like, oh, that's he a good one. Let's just. Came back with this like huge bag of that and some other microgreens. Yeah. So I was just like munching on that, and. Um, it's because you know, like, the hospital believes that breast milk is made up of protein. Well, in general, out there, they yeah. that's the theory, right? So that. that's why they're like, "Oh, you you need to have this formula milk, which is dairy based, right? Because there's Proteins. the protein in there." And then uh, the other formula was soy based. Well, soy has a lot of fat, protein, you know. So that's kind of the theory, and that's why they were trying to do that. Um, problem with like donor milk is you don't know who that donor is. So you don't know if the donor has heavy metals or radiation or DDT or viruses right. going on. The things that they don't screen for, right? They screen for like HIV and you know, all the like major things that they screen for with blood. blood. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. yeah. And, and we had called our home birth midwife, um, just to, like for support and to like talk to her about it. And, you know, and she's like, okay, well, what are you eating? And I'm like, I'm eating a ton of fruit. I'm doing this. I know I can do it. And she, she like kind of um, bashed me a little bit and was like, <laughs> you need to eat a bunch of protein because that's what makes breast milk. And so like that, you know, we had a lot of things in, in line with our home birth midwives, but the diet wasn't always like in a line. So we knew in our hearts that um, fruit, healthy carbs like potatoes, bananas, squashes, and avocado and hydration is what was gonna produce it. So long story short, I again was like pumping around the clock and I had this whole supply of colostrum, which then my milk came in two days later. Um, but everyone was like so surprised and they were like, oh my gosh, this, this colostrum is like beautiful, like liquid gold. And so I, um, I nursed him, he latched on great. I would nurse him, like I said, every three hours. And then they also wanted to give him a little bit in a bottle, so we would do that. That wasn't always the best thing because he would end up spitting it up, so. Yeah, um, yeah no, you were <laughs> cranking it out. I mean, like they even had, <laughs> she was feeding him one day and they brought in like a student from one of the colleges. Oh <laughs> and they're like, this is a perfect example of someone who is just uh, producing enough milk. They were so they were impressed by his latch, and oh. that he was you know a preemie and latching on so good. Yeah, and remember he was like five pounds seven ounces, so uh, I don't he's know. A if good he, size he, preemie. Yeah, like he he's a big preemie, you know. Yeah, um, I think like I forget what it like. I think the like preemie weight is like just under six pounds, so um, you know he's more of a. Um, a mid, I think they call it, calling it like a mid preterm or... But then they, they did a like a test on him where they looked at like... 
oh, yeah, his different body what parts it? and how well formed they were. To and see like, you know, if he really was only, you know, 34 and a half weeks, 35 weeks and... They thought he was like 36 weeks. At least a week ahead, yeah. a week or two ahead. So, but you know, she didn't have her dates off. We think it was just, he, he just was being re fed all the right stuff. And grew, just developed grew great, yeah. I guess. Um, yeah, they also, so I, the student, and then they also had one of their like doctor handoff meetings in there when I was um, breastfeeding and they asked if it would be okay. And then they were all like, ooh, <laughs> latch it on good. <laughs> like, He's a latcher. <laughs> all right. Um, but yeah, in the NICU, the way it's set up is each baby has their own little room, which is nice. So like when I stayed there um, that one night with him, you know, there's like curtains you can shut and it's like we had our own little room. Um, even though you can like still hear, there's not like a solid door, you can still hear the nurses and stuff. It was nice because you're not like in this big open room with all these babies and things like that. So you have some privacy. It, it was a good setup, um, definitely. And I had my own little bed to stay with him. And, that was nice, you know, being able to like stay in the room with him and not be in a room without him and feeling weird, like, you know, because you're used to like having the baby inside of you and like, you know, right there and then all of a sudden they're not right there, so. So yeah, we, d we did like the breastfeeding stuff went great, right? Yeah, and that was good. So they wanted to, you know, monitor his weight gain. Um, he of course lost weight because every baby like loses, I think it's like at least 10% of their birth weight. Um, Cause when they're born, they have a lot, they have extra water retention for when they're in the womb um, and they lose that water weight when they're out. And then so, you know, that was one thing they wanted to do was monitor his weight gain. Yeah. Right? They wanted to monitor to make sure he was latching on and that he was feeding properly. Yeah. They had him on like an IV like the first day until Ashley was able to produce milk just to keep him hydrated. Yep. They got him off of that after the first day and then they had him on like a heat lamp and that heat lamp would uh, produce heat to just keep his body temperature uh, nice and warm, like simulating being in the belly, you know? Um, so eventually they were able to get him off that. Yeah, they like, I think slowly decreased the percentage of the heat and then eventually it was off after like maybe a day and a half or something. Yep. It's because he was able to maintain his own body heat. And then, you know, his heart rate was good, his oxygen level was good, so it's yeah, like... Yeah, he was breathing on his own. Yeah, there was, you know, there was, everything was going great, like he was checking all the boxes. Right. Yep. And because we kept saying, okay, when can we get him out of here and go home? Yeah. <laughs> and they're like, we know, because everyone knew, like, okay, these are the people that had the home birth. Like, they don't want to be here. They want to deny everything. Like, <laughs> they knew who we were. Yeah. Um, and so, yeah, then after a day or two, he started to show signs of jaundice with the yellowing of the skin and the eyes. Um, and then, so when that happened, they were like, okay, we need to monitor his jaundice levels. Um, so they would do like a little heel prick test um, to test his levels. They also had like a Billy Rubin, uh, some sort of sensor gun thing that they would shoot At at his chest, chest and yeah. his forehead. And that's how they would test his. Yeah, so that slowly like would increase and then um, it was, what day was it? It was like Thursday, it was pretty high. He was born Tuesday morning. Thursday it was pretty high and they're like, okay, we have to keep checking it. Otherwise, if it gets above like the high number, then we have to put him under the UV light. And we were like, well, we would prefer to do like the natural sunlight way we know lots of babies have this and that usually helps um, but they kept saying well if it gets to over this high point like we're gonna have to do this UV light and we wanted to avoid that and they're like okay well as long as it doesn't get over the high point and as he got like older each day the high point would also like rise for his age so it was like it kept his um, 
levels kept rising, but then the high point kept rising, so it was always like right under that high point. But for us, like we just wanted it to come down so we could go home. And and then it was like Friday morning, and that was after the first night where I wasn't with Ben, and I was you know there alone with the baby, and the nurses were there of course too. Um, and then they did the test that Friday morning, and then the doctor comes in, and she's like, well. They're still rising. We're gonna have to do the UV light, and you know, you guys cannot go home until um, they go down. And he's showing weight gain, and then I just like, you know, this is a few days after me giving birth. I'm like nursing and pumping around the clock, barely getting any sleep. Sleep, you know, sleeping in the <laughs> the NICU where it's loud, and I just like. I held it in, but my eyes were watery. Like I almost burst out crying and um, I just couldn't handle it. I was just like, this is in my mind, ridiculous. You know, Ben and I know that jaundice is something all babies have. We know that he would heal from it much better at home with our love and care together and to be able to just, you know, snuggle on him without all these things hooked up to him. And, um, uh, yeah, we could put him in like the sunlight because there's there was a window in that room, but it was hard to like really get the sunlight on him. We couldn't take him outside. And even if they you put him in the window, they would like kind of cover up his skin because they didn't want him to get cold or his body heat to change. Oh, yeah. So it was like we could never really get him in good natural sunlight. Now I had jaundice. All three of my sisters had jaundice. I know a lot of people that have had babies that are jaundice babies, and it goes away. But they're fear is that it will it will pass from the liver into the brain and then cause brain damage or neurological problems and you know we know from medical medium that that you know jaundice is an overburdened liver the liver is revving up and it's yeah, getting hit it with all these born. toxins and it's you know it's taken a while to kind of kind of get going Process, so you know? then it comes out in the skin and you know the external features and you know showing the liver is like really trying to work itself and you know if it's going to get to the point of brain damage there would also be other signs showing that like I think like fever and um, you know hysterically crying just like tons of other signs so in our eyes we were like you know we can monitor this jaundice ourselves we can just give him a better environment I mean especially like we don't want to be in the hospital at a time where like this pandemic is still going on like we want to get the heck out of here <laughs> you know like it's so much better for his health if we get him out of here so after that discussion with the doctor i called ben and i was just like upset i don't know did i start crying on the phone yeah and you were just like we gotta get him out of here i just and couldn't I like, like right, imagine well. <laughs> staying here for like weeks longer when he's perfectly fine you know i understand if he was like on a ventilator and like really needed to be there but he didn't yeah. and so Ben's like all right I'm on my way with your food and we're gonna we're gonna get him out of there <laughs> so 